Good morning, family. It's so good to see you this morning. If you are a first-time guest with us here at Northside, we are so excited that you are here worshiping with us. We are going to have an amazing, amazing time as we get to worship Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Oh, wow. Okay, y'all. 1034. So we start at 1030. I know we're just a few minutes behind, but Jesus is worthy to be praised. So let's stand together as we get to worship and praise his name. Great things he is doing in our midst. Amen. Let's worship together this morning.
When that darkness falls, it won't breathe in. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh my God, oh
gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle. Father, I'm so grateful. I'm thankful for this place. God, we are so excited to be in your house this morning. May the joy of the Lord be our strength. And God, whatever that we need to see, that victory, we just claim it in Jesus' name. If it's health, then we claim that. God, if it's in relationships, we claim that. It's in our finances, our parenting, our marriage, whatever the case is, God, we claim the victory in Jesus' name. Because you take what the enemy meant for evil, God. It can be so disparate. But oh, we serve a God. We serve a risen, resurrected Savior, as the old song says, who's alive and well today. Praise your name, Jesus. We will see a victory. We love you, God. We worship you. We thank you. We bless your holy name. For it is in Jesus' name that we ask these things. Amen, amen, amen. Before you are seated, would you turn to someone next to you and say, I am so glad I get to be with you in church today. And then you may be Good morning, Northside. Good morning, family. That's that's what we are here. We are a family, um, just chasing after the heart of Jesus. So thanks for doing that with us this morning. Um, I'm Pastor Hannah. I'm the youth pastor around here. If anyone doesn't know me. Um, yeah, I get up here and do the announcements. And we just go with it, right? Um, so I've got a really couple cool announcements for you guys in two weekends. So not this coming weekend, but the weekend after. We've got some really fun stuff happening. We're going to do Sundays on Saturday at the Dreamette, right down here on Dunn, the new one. Don't go to Murray Hill. Don't go to Springfield. Don't go to any of the others. Come down here on Dunn Avenue um, to the new one. It's going to be fun. We're just going to get together and hang out in the parking lot. We're going to be some, um, no, that's not the phrase. That refers to a roller rink. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to get together and just eat some ice cream. And it's just, it's just family time. Like, there is nothing to it. We're not asking us to sit outside with signs or anything like that. We're just going just to be together. That's it. So you don't have to sign up or let us know you're coming. Just come, and it's going to be a good time. Then the following morning, we are going to go together from this place, and we're going to go over to Eagles View Academy, and we're going to pray over that school, anoint it, leave sticky notes. Um, I know as a teacher last year, Eagles View, those sticky notes, they meant a lot, and God just had his sovereign hand on those sticky notes popping up when you needed them. Um, and I know I'm not the only person. That was something that I heard on the halls a lot. Um, and then students as well were deeply blessed. Those sticky notes stayed on lockers all year long so jesus fingerprints weren't just something there for the beginning and then they were gone his hand of blessing was carried out through those halls by his hands and feet in this room and we get to do that again this year for the teachers who will be back in those halls um, this year and for the students who will be back in those halls and so if you are able to come at all, please do. It's just a really cool time. It's not a huge time commitment. It really isn't. It goes fast. But then if you're not able to come, like, please be in prayer with us because the spiritual battle going on in that school is massive um, because Jesus wants their hearts, but so does the enemy. And um, it's, a, it's a school where they get to talk about Jesus in science and in math. Um, so it's, it's a really cool place with some really cool people, um, but they need, they need some, some extra firepower, and that is, that is Jesus, and that's who he is. So that's what we get to do in a couple of weeks. Also, there is no slide for this one, but these are in the welcome area. If you have never filled one out, if we don't have any information on how to contact you, please, please, please go and fill one out. Um, and get that to us just so that we can get to you if we need to, if we need to share something with you. Um, and then also if your information has changed, if you've moved, if you got a new phone number, fill one out. Um, and then if this is your first Sunday, you know, if it's your first Sunday, go ahead and fill one out for us too because 
either way, we just want to be able to talk to you. We're not going to bombard you. It's not for like some monthly newsletter. Clutch my pearls. Um, I'm not, we're not doing that. It's just so we can be part of the family. Like how can you have a family member and not have their number, you know? So that kind of thing. So Phil went out. Um, and with that, we are going to give God our tithes and offerings back to him. So if our ushers would come forward to collect that for us, and if you guys would pray with me. Jesus, I just thank you for your presence in this place. Your presence is so sweet. And Jesus, if there's someone in this room who isn't feeling it this morning, Jesus, would you just allow the family of God to come together and bring comfort? Because, Jesus, you tell us, yes, to mourn with those who mourn, but you also say to rejoice with those who rejoice. So, Jesus, let this morning um, and our time together, let there be mourning and let there be rejoicing. Because um, we all carry a lot of things into this place, but, Jesus, you are strong enough to carry us. And you're strong enough to carry those circumstances. So, Lord, would you just come around us and, and support us? And Jesus, even if the hallelujahs being raised up might come from a place of brokenness or even bitterness, Jesus, let the act of obedience ring forth for what it is. Jesus, I just pray for a boldness as we choose to walk in faithfulness to you. That you just give us an assurance of how much you love us. And how you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for our good in your glory, Jesus. So, Lord, do that as we give you our tithes and offerings, as we continue in our acts of worship and entrusting back to you the things that you've entrusted to us. Jesus, let there just be um, multiplication in those things, that there would be provision. There would be abundance, Jesus, but let us just come with um, a heart of anticipation for what you're going to do in all things, but especially in this moment, Jesus, help us to, to worship you, to give you the praise, glory, and honor that you so deserve, Jesus. You deserve beyond anything that we could bring or not bring. So Jesus, just help us to be a sweet aroma to you. I love you, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So as you are giving your tithes and offerings, many of you know that we had an exciting week this past week here at Northside because it was VBS week. Now, some of you may have been able to be a part of that. And while I'm so excited that you were able to do that. Some of you were able to attend. Some of you taught. Some of you did all of those things. And so, yes, it was a Monday. It was a Tuesday and a Wednesday. And we went for two and a half hours every single night. But we have put together a three-minute video. So we have combined, what is that, two and a half, two and a half, five, seven and a half hours and three minutes for your viewing pleasure. Um, so if you will turn your attention to the screen, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it now. Um, I want to personally thank Dr. Katie uh, for all of her hard work in organizing that. Um, somebody give me a ride home. Um, I, I know that this is a love of yours, but thank you for pouring into our people, pouring into our children. For those that served or are part of that team, wow, it wasn't unnoticed. I know a lot of you came from work. We fed you. We fed you well. And uh, But just know that your reward, and I know it sounds a little corny, is not in here. You have no idea what kind of investments were made. And until you get to heaven, you won't know. But we're just going to keep pressing into that. And we're going to keep journeying into that. So just know, I can tell you, lives were changed. And I will just say this to you right now. The last, because I did this video for you too. The last, the, not the last two slides, but the two slides before, at the end of the video, you'll see them and you'll know. Those are my favorite two slides of the, of the, the video that you see. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but those are my favorite two slides. So if you'll, guys, if you'll hit the lights and we will turn our attention to the screen and watch this recap. I 
how to play that game that Tim was chasing those children around with. You can talk to him after service. <laughs> but again, my favorite slides up there to see all these kids and adults um, up at the altar. And, and again, we say it every single week. There's nothing magical about these altars. They're just wood and some cloth and a little bit of cushion for your knees. But it's the significance of saying, you know what? I, I, I know that there is a God. And I don't just want to know about him. I want to know who he is in my life. And so that's why we do what we do. That's why we spend those times together. So this morning I would ask as we just continue our worship here this morning, would you stand together? And, and maybe I love what Pastor Hannah said. You know what? We all walked in with all kinds of stuff in our pockets, in our spiritual pockets. And maybe we put them there so that we can hide them from other people. Maybe we put them there so that we can deal with them after church. But I'm just going to tell you right now, those are the things that God wants right now. We're going to sing a song, and, and we love this this song here at this church. Um, but it says, build my life. And when we say build my life, it's not building on what I think it should be, but it's building on a firm foundation. It's Jesus in all things, in all things, <laughs> including those things that we stuff in our pocket that Jesus, we think that Jesus can't see. So let's continue to worship and praise him here this morning as he is worthy, church. He is worthy. Jesus, we sing to you. He's worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever sing. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say we see. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe.
Jesus, we declare that you are Lord. You are all powerful. And we surrender and we submit to you. We follow your name, Jesus. So walking around these walls, and I thought by now they'd fall. But you have never failed me yet. And waiting for change to come, and knowing the battles won. For you have never failed me. still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never fail me yet oh you never fail The night won't last 
Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my you this morning, dear God. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for the ability and the opportunity to be able to worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Father, for the songs that you have put in our hearts, dear God. Thank you that this is the day that you have made and we are here to rejoice and to be glad in it. You are so much God all by yourself. You do all things perfectly. And we thank you for the opportunity to be able to be here this morning, dear God. We give you our hearts, we give you our minds, we give you our spirit. So, Father, we thank you for every song that has been sung this morning. We thank you, Father, that your spirit is in this place. We pray, Lord, we allow you access to our very hearts. You know us from the inside out. And so, Father, we make ourselves available to you. We thank you for Pastor Katie this morning who will be bringing the word. We pray in the name of Jesus, dear God, that as she opens her mouth this morning, that it will be you filling it. We thank you, Father, that she has set herself apart to be used by you. And so, Father, we pray that you would prepare our hearts that we will be receptive to your word, that we just won't hear your word and say it, oh, it's a good word, but that we will apply your word to our hearts, that we won't sin against you. We thank you for the moving and the shaking that is taking place in this place and in our hearts and in our minds. So Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, dear God, that as you move, dear God, we pray that your word will fall on good soil. Prepare our hearts even now, dear God, 
that Lord, that whatever we hear, that we will take your word and hide it in our hearts, dear God. That we will be forever changed, dear God. We thank you, Lord, for what we know that you can do and what we believe that you will do in this place this morning. So we pray that you would have your divine way moved by the power of your Holy Spirit. These things we do ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Hallelujah to his name. Glory to his name. If you were in fifth grade or under, you may exit. I don't have to say quickly because it just always is quickly going that direction. And uh, so we are so excited again that each and every one of you are here worshiping with us. If this is your very first time at Northside, wow, we say welcome. Glad you're here. Thanks for being here and worshiping with us. As Pastor D said, this is Pastor Katie, and she is, um, I would definitely say, um, the better half of this relationship. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, the more prettier of this side of the relationship. And um, just in case anyone's like, what is that guy saying? This is my wife, and it's a joy, it's an honor to co-pastor with her, this great congregation. And so, church family, we are going to be blessed, and uh, we are excited. And so would you please make welcome your pastor. This is Pastor Katie Ferry that's going to be bringing forth the word this morning. Yes, yes. Um, yes. So to echo what Pastor Aaron was saying this morning about Vacation Bible School this week, it was such a huge blessing. And I have um, put in my share over the past 25 years of ministry that Aaron and I have um, been a part of. Um, my fair share of vacation Bible schools. Some very, very large, some a little smaller, but what I can tell you is that um, the ones that I have been involved in here at Northside have been a little different. And I mean that in a really good way because what we've made sure of doing is, yes, we have a, a small wow factor, right? But we make sure that the ministry matches that wow factor because there are lives at stake, little person's lives at stake. Um, statistics will show you that if you have not had the opportunity to invest in the lives of children 12 and under, first and foremost, and, and I don't know if you've heard of George Barna, but he, is, um, he does statistics within the church, right, um, through Christianity. And he will tell you in a lot of the books that he's written that only 34% of our population may become actual Christ followers. That's not just going to church, because there's a lot of people who go to church who aren't really Christ followers. Um, but only 34% of, of the population actually become sold out Christ followers. If that, hasn't, if that change hasn't taken place in their life the time, by the time they are age 12, that drops to four. So what, you know, us, us as believers, investing into the lives of children, it is vital. It's vital in the life of the church um, because so many of them um, can become nurtured in, and discipled in their walk. And it might be a little bit less of an understanding as we as adults think that we have about who Jesus is. But because their hearts are so pure, and maybe they haven't walked through some of the things that we've walked through, that percentage is much higher if we can, if Jesus can grab a hold of them by the time they're age of 12. So children's ministry is so vital to the life of the church. Um, so thank you again for those of you, for all, for the entire church of Northside, because even if you weren't able to serve during the week or whatever the case may be, you invested by praying through the week or by donating items, or whatever it is that you had your hands involved in, um, God used that this week. And when Pastor Ann was talking about those two slides of it being his favorite, these places, um, these altars, were a space where lives were being altered. And um, no matter how big or how small. And so um, we got to be a part of what God was doing. So 
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, church. Um, so we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit over the past seven weeks, and today is the eighth week, and we have one more, which is the ninth week, because there are nine attributes in the overall fruit of the Spirit. But I have to tell you that I've been so thankful for the opportunity to look at these at the fruit individually, look at these components, these attributes individually. But what we need to make sure we take note of is that when we read in scripture about the fruit of the spirit, it is singular, okay? Sometimes people might say the fruits of the spirit, but what we have to remember is God did, the Holy Spirit did not intend to give us the fruit of the spirit, each one individually. We have to understand that that word fruit is singular. There's no S on the end of fruit of the spirit, okay? And, but I, I have to be honest, to be able to take those individual attributes that we've looked at um, so exclusively and be able to take that to, we've talked to you about the bottom of the triangle, and ask God, ask Holy Spirit those second and third questions. Am I truly walking in step with the Spirit, and are these attributes shining through my life as a Christ follower? Because if they're not, then it's an additional question. And sometimes that question comes through the Holy Spirit. You know, is there something that we need to tweak so that you are shining these attributes as you are in relationship with other people? So I've appreciated the fact that we have um, talked about these attributes individually. But we have to remember that this is a collective, collective group of attributes, that these things are never separated. Okay, they're never separated. These attributes become a holistic life of growth in the spirit for us as Christ followers. These attributes help us become more like Christ. They don't work individually. They work together. They work simultaneously. Okay? They work in conjunction with one another. They work as one. They work in concert. They work concurrently. They help us to keep, they help keep us in step with the spirit and put off the flesh when, when, and, and flesh representing our sinful nature. Okay. When we see the word flesh, when Paul uses the word flesh in the book of Galatians, that is representing our sinful nature. When we look at the book of Galatians overall, this was an epistle, a letter written by Paul to the church of Galatia. And at that point in time, the churches in Galatia were fractioned, meaning that they were separated. They were separated by their preferences. They were separated by their individual thoughts and beliefs, a lot of which were not biblical, right? Because sometimes those preferences get in the way of truly, um, truly the way God intended church to be. These churches could at times question authority. And if we were to look at that in modern day language, it might be, um, there might be phrases that came out of their mouths like, you know, why do we need to follow Jesus? Why can't we just live by the law that we've been learning about for the past, you know, two, three centuries, right? Why is there a need for a relationship with one another? Why do we have to be in community? They would sometimes question question Paul's authority. And of course, Paul in his humanness would do things that we might do, right? He would defend himself. He was human, just like us. But what we need to take note of in this book, in this letter that he wrote to the church, was the way that he defended himself. It's very important to take note of that. See, most of us in our humanness, when we are defending ourselves, we might lash out. Or we might say nothing at all, and can I add to that statement that neither one is correct? Neither one is correct. Whether you lash out, whether your personality is one that you are going to be boisterous and lash out, or be silent about something, neither one is correct. We might tout our list of accomplishments. We might give reasons why we should be the ones that are in authority, and reasons why our authority shouldn't be questioned. 
See, all of those things that I just described would be things that point back to ourselves. Okay, they point back to ourselves. And Paul might do some of those things, however, however, in those things, his intent was to point people to Jesus as he highlighted the reversal that took place in his life when God touched him. Let me just remind you of the story, right? When Saul was on the road to Damascus and he was changed physically in the moment, but that led to a spiritual change for his entire life. Paul exampled to us that in his own weakness, he was able to show God's strength. Paul exampled to us that he had no authority on his own, that his stand came only from God and not from other human beings. His effectiveness came about because of his ineffectiveness. So many times that happens in our own life. His authority came about because of his submission to God. His preaching came from his sole reliance on Jesus Christ. But his highest claim to fame, and this is what I hope, that people will think of me, whether either now or when I'm gone from this place, that he once was a sinner, but now is saved. His approach that he took in leadership and in, in directing or redirecting or even bringing correction was pointing back to the one who was in control of it all. The one that was in control of it all. So today we're going to spend some time on the attribute of gentleness. This is the eighth attribute of the fruit. And Vine's expository dictionary would define gentleness as meekness. And in the English language, our minds, when we think of gentleness, our minds might go to weakness or even mildness. But if we look at the Greek word for um, gentleness in scripture, the word is uh, prautes. And that word prautes changes the mindset for us because prautes describes a condition of the mind and of the heart. The mind and the heart. So those two things are working together. They're working together. When we think of gentleness as we have been conditioned to think, it is just possibly about actions or how we are towards one another. But what I have come to understand as I've been thinking about gentleness, as I've been taking this to the bottom of my triangle, as I've been just reach, researching what the word says about it, meekness manifested by the spirit and received by us is the fruit of power. It is not weak. It is power. We commonly assume that when a man or a woman is meek or mild, they're just weak. They're the ones who want to stand behind the scenes. They're the ones that, you know, the things that are going on in their life don't show up as much, right? But what we can see through scripture was that the Lord was gentle and meek because he had the infinite resources of God at his command. John 13, 3 says, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and that he was one, will again return to God. This helps us see that our connection to Father God is the source of gentleness. All right, let's take a look at a familiar passage, and it will be up here on the screen. It's John 15, verses 5 and 6. Okay, you guys can turn to that in your own word, or if you want to look at the screen, you can. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. When I read that and I relate that scripture to my life, it becomes pretty clear, right? It becomes pretty clear that the way that we produce fruit, fruit of the Spirit, is to remain in Him, to abide. That it's all about pursuing Him, not doing more. And we can get trapped in that. Verse 6 says, If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. So again, pretty clear. When we do not remain in him, 
It becomes a reliance on the flesh, which remember, flesh represents our sinful nature, which can lead to what scripture says, destruction, eternal death. And I'm going to add this for you. It can hurt. It can lead to hurt and brokenness and pain. And we can see those things in people's lives all the time. We can see those things in our lives. So as a newer mom, um, I was having one of those days that felt a little bit chaotic. <laughs> and those of you who are in this room who have ever been around children, whether they've been your own or someone else's, you can all kind of relate to that. You have those moments where it just feels chaotic. And sometimes you have those moments that are not just a moment, but you feel like it lasts for hours and hours and hours on end. Um, I was, I had come, this was a specific day that I had kind of come to the end of my wit. And um, I began to start pleading my case to my children about why things needed to be different around here, okay? We need to make some changes. Things need to be different around here. Why can't you get along with your sister? Why can't you pick up your toys and keep your tea set together? Why can't you act like you're nine instead of you're three because things would change for you if you did? We've all made statements, right, that have come across that way. And I kept going until I felt like I was done. But what I saw in my husband's eyes was I needed to be done sooner than later. <laughs> he made me, he made that very clear. He made that very clear. Um, Aaron looked at me and um, something that we, we always tried to do um, when our kids were younger and just when they were in the house um, was if we had some intense moments of fellowship, we would also make sure that we apologized and ask for forgiveness in front of them. Because you know what? It's okay to have those moments, but we also need to show how those moments are healed, okay? And so we would make sure that we would do those things in front of them to be that, to be that example and that model. So he pulled me over to the side and he looked at me and he said, although the things that you are saying, what you are saying may be true, what you are saying may be right, your delivery right now is all wrong. Although what you may be saying is correct, it's true, how you are saying it, your delivery is all wrong. Our kids are not going to hear you if you keep talking to them this way. Now, some of you might be like, if my spouse said that to me, we would go round and round. Let me get to my point. Let me get to my point. Okay. This was an area that I needed to work on. And if we are in partnership, and individually we are in partnership, then I have to trust and believe that sometimes when the Holy Spirit is trying to teach me and I'm not listening, he's going to place some other people in my life to help me hear what I need to hear. Or help me hear what I have needed to hear in the past. So Aaron acknowledged in that moment um, that I had a hard day and that it was not looking up for me. And he gave me an opportunity to go and take some time away. You know, I, I don't remember how long it was, but just a time for me to go and abide, a time for me to go and remain and to just really just be with my Savior for those moments. Because what he didn't want for me was that form of communication to become the norm. He didn't want that to become the norm. I was able to make some of those changes, and although I don't do that perfectly, still to this day, it's still something that I'm constantly working on. I'm constantly having at the forefront of my thought process and how I'm communicating to whether it's my kids, my husband, any anyone that I relate to or come into contact with. I will never forget that powerful yet gentle reminder that if I'm abiding, if I'm remaining in the Lord, he's going to keep me in step with the Spirit, and the way that I communicate can be gentle. So that statement was made to me in a powerful yet gentle way, all wrapped up in one. Here's something that the Lord has given me over the years about gentleness. 
It says, gentleness is strength under control. It is not the absence of strength, but the addition of grace. No one ever said that being a strong person meant that that goes without gentleness. As a matter of fact, gentleness is strength, okay, but under control. It is gentleness. Gentleness is strength under control. It's not the absence of that strength, but the addition of grace. In Psalm 18, um, we see, if you, you were to ever read the whole chapter of Psalm 18, this is a psalm written by David that was a form of praise to God. He was praising God for who God had created him to be, mostly physical, physically. Um, he celebrated the physical strength that God had given him. You can look at many different verses in that chapter. For instance, um, verse 29 says that David can run against a troop and leap over a wall. He says in verse 33, God trains my hands for war, making my arms strong enough to bend a bow of bronze. Verse 39 says, God equipped me with strength that, and made my feet like the feet of a deer. See, time and time again, David mentions his human strength, right? The strength that is within him. I am a strong person. I can do this on my own, right? But then when you get to Psalm 18, verse 35, I think this is going to come up on the screen. It says this, and this is out of the English Standard Version, the ESV. You have given me the shield of your salvation, and your right hand supported me. And your gentleness made me great. Your gentleness made me great. See, the strength and the valor and all of these experiences that David had made him an expert in war. It made him an expert in war. But it was God's own gentleness which David learned firsthand that made David great. Not only had this omnipotent, you know, all-knowing God, not only had David been gentle with his anointed one, because remember David was anointed, but God's gentleness is what helped characterize David's leadership. Um, a British Old Testament scholar by the name of Derek Kidner says this about specifically that chapter of, of Psalm. While it was the gentleness God exercised that allowed David his success, it was the gentleness God taught him that was his true greatness. So there we see the life of David and the strength that is within him. And we can go back all the way to when he was a little boy and that strength was being um, nurtured in him. Right? You are to be the next king. That takes strength. But you can be strong and you can lead out of gentleness. So the fruit of the Spirit was given to us in Galatians because of the way those in the churches of Galatia were acting and the way they were behaving relationally towards one another. In their humanness, they struggled to relate. And guess what? We can think on those same struggles. Right? We are all here in this room and we all have different thoughts and we have we all have different ways of doing things. And that's and when we relate towards one another, there's something that needs to come along beside us so that we do that while walking in step with the Spirit. Paul was directed by the Spirit to offer this guidance that we call the fruit of the Spirit. And in that same guidance, we can take it and apply it to our own lives. Over the years of, of ministry that Aaron and I have done, over um, we've done counseling for people, for children, for men, for women, for premarital counseling and marital counseling. We've heard phrases that are very common. This is just the way God made me. You know, this is just the way that God made me. I'm just a strong person. I'm just a really bold person. So, you know, if it comes across that way to them, well, that's on them. That's not on me. Right? You hear those common phrases, but what it helped us, helped us recognize and then take to those people sitting across from us on those couches was we wanted to help them recognize. We wanted to help them recognize that that comes out of a place of not knowing scripture and how 
um, the things that God has modeled to us throughout Scripture needs to relate to us. Jesus did not justify Scripture for certain people, and he did not justify Scripture for situations. So when we contend to go at it from this is how I am or this is how I think I am, then we're going to start looking at scripture and it's going to start being spun different ways. And we're going to start making it work for ourselves. See, Jesus, he spoke the truth. He did it with gentleness. His delivery method was a model of gentleness, yet still full of the, full of the truth, which means that's how we need to operate at the same time. I can speak the truth to you, but I can do it in a gentle way so that you are able to receive it. Because the way we deliver and the way we communicate matters. When we are bringing correction and redirection to our children, when we are in intense fellowship with our spouses, when we are disagreeing with someone that's sitting next to us, we need to remember and be mindful of the way our words are crafted. We need to think about how our words will come across to them. We need to remember that everyone we are speaking to and related to, or relating to, have been created in the image of God. They are his children. There's no getting around that. And I've often said that I must always remember who I am talking to, whose I am talking to. I have often said that I am speaking to one of God's creation. And they deserve, they deserve to be cared for and cultivated. And that goes all the way back to the beginning, all the way back to Genesis, where God told Adam that now you're going to have to care for and cultivate the earth. That's not just talking about the ground people were walking on, but that's talking about the people that was walking on the ground. Okay? We have to remember that they are one of God's creations. It matters how we talk to them. And no matter how irritated, how frustrated, how angry I might feel on the inside, <laughs> if I'm truly living in step with the Spirit, then I'm going to allow my mind to be renewed. Scripture says that, right? That we're going to be renewed, okay? Renewed over and over and over again. We need to make sure that we're allowing our thoughts of how we have been created, that, that we may have been created a certain way to capture those thoughts. That maybe, possibly, we've been created in a way that was modeled to us. And so instead of thinking about how who God is created to be, we're just going to live out our life in what's been modeled to us. <coughs> instead of allowing those things to penetrate our hearts and lives. And I know that they're not easy because we grow up, we're raised in a certain way. We are able to um, see things, how things are done. This is, this is supposed to be how I lead. This is supposed to be how I talk to people. This is supposed to be how I'm living out what God's doing in my life. I need to then allow that to be altered. I need to allow that to be altered. I need to allow the word of God to penetrate my heart and life and allow God to change me into who he's created me to be. And we all have work to do. The Holy Spirit is working these things out in us and through the situations that we are walking through. And there is not a person in this place that is not walking through some sort of situation. Those situations are not things that get in the way, but they are the way. They are not things that get in the way. They are things that are, that are the way. They are things that God knows that we are walking through, and if we are partnering with the Lord, then he's going to teach us things. He's going to work all of those things out for our good and his glory. None of us are exempt from the scripture that says, I am working all things out for the good of those who love me according to my plan and purpose for your life, Romans 8, 28. None of us are exempt from that. We must be willing to truly examine whether or not this attribute of the Spirit shines through us. We need to ask ourselves, is our strength and our truth 
and the things that we stand firmly on is our leadership and words and relationships. Are they paddle, padded with the gentleness of the Spirit? This isn't an easy question to ask because I know that we've all been there. We've all, um, can I use the phrase, blown our top, right? We've all come across as not being gentle in the moment. But we need to truly ask ourselves that question. Are all of these things padded with the gentleness of the Spirit? And if that, an that question is answered truthfully, it can change the trajectory of our relationships with one another and possibly our witness to those who need to know about the love of our Savior. So my question for you today is this. What needs to be altered at the altar? We all have work to do. We all have to do our part. The Holy Spirit has given us these things to live by, to live in step with. But we have to do our part. Coming here on Sunday mornings is a, is a big portion of that. God wants you to be a part of a community of blessing where we can encourage one another. But it's more than that. It's more than that. And the reason it's more than that is because he has more for us. He has more for us. So what needs to be altered here at the altar? We spell those two altars differently. Like I had stated to the kids, and like I said over and over again, right? This is a safe space where we can stop trying to hide our messes, and we can experience what it looks like to walk in his majesty. And so this morning, we are going to sing a song at my request. This is an um, older song um, that Hillsong wrote it a really long time ago. But it talks about how he is the potter, right? We are the clay. And that he gently calls us into his presence. And he's reminding us that if we will allow him to, he will mold us and he will shape us. But it goes back to, it goes back to remaining in him and abiding in him, right? He has things that he wants to show us. So we are going to sing that song this morning. And we're going to pray. And if there's something that you want to pray about this morning, maybe it is about gentleness, or maybe God has been tweaking your heart about one of these other attributes of the Spirit. But regardless of what it is, this is, a, this is a place where, again, we, can, we, can, we don't have to hide our mess. We can say, God, I know that you have something else for me. And in this moment, I want to be crafted by you. I want to be molded. I want to be shaped by you. And again, again, that renewal of the mind is not something that just happened one time. It's consistent. It's consistent. He's constantly showing us who he is and who he wants to be for us in our lives. So let's sing this one. Would you stand together this morning? And know that the altars are open if you want to come. It's a beautiful Lord, a wonderful Savior, I know for sure.
to do because that's the Holy Spirit's job, but I just wonder, as Pastor Katie was talking, especially there at the end, and I, I just wonder if we have um, used gentleness and called it gentleness, when in all actuality, it just straight up was me. And I just wonder if maybe there's people in this room that you need to go, you know what, what I thought was gentle was just sheer ugliness. And so I need to confess that to you. And I want to make sure that I'm right before you with that. And so it could be um, a spouse. It could be maybe you need to look at your kid and go, man, I thought I was being so holy and I was as far from Christ as possible. So I just wonder, that also is power under control. It's the Spirit's power underneath in our own lives and saying, you know what, I'm yielding to that. So I'm just throwing that out there. Maybe you want to come and we're just going to sing one more chorus and then we will be dismissed. But don't just think that that was a nice message. Thanks, Pastor Katie, so much. That doesn't apply to me. I guess it really, we have to say, am I going to allow that attribute of the spirit, that gentleness? Am I going to allow that to be the driving factor in my life or not? So I'm captured by your holy calling, set me apart, I know you're drawing me to yourself, lead me Lord I pray. Let's sing that again. So I'm captured by your it's in this physical building but God you reside if we know you as Lord and Savior in our hearts and in our lives so Lord I ask that God we Holy Spirit we would allow you to get in even to those nooks and crannies that we think ah God doesn't need to see that God doesn't need to get in that closet 
Lord, I ask that we would just allow you to permeate every aspect of who we are. Or whatever is going on in our lives, the enemy loves to bring confusion and to create confusion. And so, Lord, we put him on notice. We say, as the king's kids, we walk in victory, as that song said. We live in the faithfulness of God Almighty. And we say, it is new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. God, I love the line in that song. It says, I'm still in your hands. God, even when we are as far away from your hand as possible, we are still there. And Holy Spirit, you are wooing us back. So God, I pray that each and every one of us, even in those areas that we think we've got it together, Holy Spirit, woo us back and say, oh, no, no, no. That's not of me. That's not of me. Let me, let me guide and direct that. God, as the song says, take me and mold me. God, we think we can shape ourselves, but oh, it's going to be ugly. So, Father, we say, take us and mold us and shape us into the people that you are wanting us to be. For our good and for your glory, Jesus. Let us be blessing over each and every one of us. Holy Spirit, guide and direct. Show us those things. That we need to submit to you, oh, so that when then we can see the fruit begin to grow. Jesus, help us to remain in you. God, as we said earlier, without you, Jesus, we can do nothing. But with God, all things are possible. And so, Jesus, we choose to walk in that promise. We choose to walk in that. God, and direct Jesus. Lord, we want to be more like you. Holy Spirit, give us the strength. God, help us to close our mouth when we need to. Maybe that's just for me, Jesus. I'll take that. Help us to speak up, God, when we're supposed to. Help us to walk boldly in your spirit. But above all, help us to walk in your love. We walk in your grace, your forgiveness, and your mercy. We love you in all things, Jesus, and we worship you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. For it is in Jesus' name that we ask these things. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, family, thank you for being here this morning. Thanks for saying, you know what? This is important. This is important that we be here together. So make sure that you love on somebody next to you, shake their hand, squeeze their neck. Yes, I am watching. And then you are dismissed. Have an amazing, amazing week. You are loved. You're dismissed.